TKO fans, uh, the boy, hey, <laughs> straight off the bat, Rusty. We're Rusty. <laughs> That's it. Us phones on silent, boys. Fuck. F- five weeks between uh, between drinks, knock off nation. But the boys are back on deck, coming at you from the uh, Village Green Studios. The TKO Christmas special is upon us. We're yeah. one week out from Christmas. Cheers, boys. To Danny and to Chris and all of Knock Off Nation, uh, Merry Christmas to you all. Trying to finish this year with an absolute banger. We've got some runs on the board this year and 2018 uh, is where we earn that retirement cash. (laughs) 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 We settled that contract. Yeah, we settled that contract dispute. That's why we haven't been on air. There's, we said... 15 grand in app, and we meant it. <laughs> <laughs> now we're getting that paper, that boom gang. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, gang shit. It has been a good year, though, man. We've, we've had on some really interesting people, and I'm um, just pumped for the holidays, man. How, how good are holidays? Seriously. The holiday season when you've got the mental security as a sports fan knowing that we got the urn. Like the, ashes has ret- <laughs> the ashes has returned. To Australia, Australia this afternoon sealing a 3-0 victory in the cricket at the WACA. The last ever test match at the WACA. It was an unbelievable turn of events, really, where both teams just got huge runs in the first dig. Then the Aussies, the Aussie quicks just wore them down with the ball again. Hazelwood was outstanding. Smith, Marsh, Redemption, 3-0. It's games on serve, really, at the moment in the Ashes, where we go there and we'll lose them. Then we'll come out here and we'll just brain them. So I'm... From here, I'd say Australia 5-0 at this point. There's no coming back for the Pommies. They're, right. Pommies are already calling it uh, in the media over there, tour de source, where they've, it's been a couple of off-field things that personally me as a, as a bloke who likes getting on the piss and knows blokes and stuff, and really non event but the, the media has chosen to target that to try and... Tour de sources and they've all been on it? Yes. Yeah, um, there's been a head... Up, yeah. head uh, Johnny Bairstow, their wicketkeeper... Uh, headbutted one of the Aussie players at a pub one night. Like no, <laughs> really? nothing, re- nothing really serious. Oh, if you I ask those that. guys, and then yeah, yeah, another fellow on their team, uh, Duckett, he poured a. He, he hasn't got a game out here. He's basically a Kentucky tourist, really. Like not not getting a game, just playing the warm up matches only. Not and rooting good heaps of twenty one year olds <laughs> would be. Uh, yeah, I yeah, guarantee. Like, <laughs> Facts. Not mad at him. <laughs> 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 so he he pours a schooner on uh, James Anderson, who's their out and out senior fast bowler, like five hundred Test wickets, is a, a stud in his own right. You got the the rookie Kentucky tourist pouring a skewy on his head at the pub. They're all getting that blind and shit. Oh, so yeah. but sort it's of derailed their campaign a little bit. But um, to the Aussie credit, man, we've been we've been strong all round. Like we've, we've managed to get it done. So and so does the do the rest of the series get played over there? No, no, two games to go. So Boxing Day test at the MCG, uh, I see. which loses a bit of sting too. Like, unfortunately, it'd be good to be getting to that test if it was if it was still alive and yeah. would add a bit of sort of it's pepper like the to that origin thing. Yeah, that's right. But yeah. at the same time, man, there's going to be there'll still be ninety five thousand to hundred thousand there on Boxing Day watching that, getting to, absolutely mortal. Absolutely, still <laughs> still nursing the Christmas Day hangover, really, yeah. where you're just topping up from Christmas Day. So it'd be like going to the UFC in Brisbane, Dan. Like, was that? That was a morning session for us on a Sunday morning. That, that was we in went Feb, there. though, wasn't it? Um, that wasn't any kind of like holiday lead in. No, that it wasn't. But still, yeah. people on the piss on a Saturday night. Yeah. Though, so you're dealing with that I, hangover. I pretty you, much. If you went to day two or three at the yeah. at the MCG, it'd be pretty messy, mate. Yeah. Like mm. if you bought a ticket in the ticket in the cheap seats, and we're just amongst the gen pop, it would be saucy as fuck. Yeah. So the the uh, entire crowd drinks. Pretty much, man. Really? Your, oh. Especially you can buy tickets in certain bays where you know it's. A festy, like so. You got a Bay Thirteen at the MCG. Whether you're going there for AFL or cricket, if you buy a ticket in Bay Thirteen, you know it. A ah, piss up. So mm. b- b- a booze. That's right. Yeah. Friendly, 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 you, yeah. <laughs> friendly crew. And you yeah. can get you can get the vast majority of the stadium is licensed at but at any sporting event where you go to yeah, sort of thing. Yeah. That's where they make their money is on alcohol. Yeah, like, exactly. So but much. it just seems to affiliate with cricket more because you got you sit there in the sun and you watch yeah. for extended periods of time and it's a long day out there. Yeah. If, you've, if you've ever been to a game of test cricket, you know, it's a it's a long day. Like it's for the for the purists and that's why the big bash is going so well. That starts this week and it's three hours. So yeah. you go out there, you're getting entertained, there's music between each ball. It's like it's a a cricket party, like if mm. it would dead set be worth going to a night at the Big Bash, man, you'd you'd get uh, some enjoyment out of it. Oh, absolutely! It, as not non cricket fans, you'd still be like, "Fuck, this is all right." Like, 
Most definitely. Yeah, yeah. Bit, bit absolutely, man. Here. Collective energy and atmosphere mm-hmm. and alcohol makes everything better. Yeah. You know? Just go watch, go watch Lenny do his thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Shout out. He was, he was one of the guests <laughs> of, of 17, Chris Lee, and that was a, a barn burner. And he's he's got his work cut out for him now, heading towards the Big Bash. It's uh, mm. that's only, only launching this week, so nothing but love, man. We hope he just gets on that absolute heater and uh, just – Entertained us again. Yeah, is uh, is the ashes up there with your favourite sporting moments or most? It's big every year. Of yeah, 2017. As, a, as a sports fan, it is big. But um, geez, there, there has been so many for mm. me. One of the one of them the, the happened early in the year in in March or April, whenever it's played. But one of the out and out sporting things for me this year was seeing Sergio Garcia win a green jacket. Like, widely touted. He grew up in the same era as Tiger. So he's been playing against Tiger Woods since these guys are 19, 20 years old and always had that stigma around him and it might have been one of those dreaded things that he was that it was his cross to bear for a retirement sort of thing, but not being labelled the best player not to win a major. So you, you don't want that. Like the, if you're known as the best player ne- who just never won one of the big four. So if yeah. you, you you didn't win a Masters, you didn't win a US Open, you didn't win a PGA, and you didn't win a British Open. Like right. you, did, you didn't get one of the big four. You won an absolute fuckload of golf tournaments, but you never got one of the big ones, which really adds credibility. Like it's right. one of those sports that like look great player, nah, ne- never contended in the majors. Like you need to win the big ones ah, in that sport okay. to get notoriety, and that's where a guy like Tiger, Tiger's won eighteen right. majors. majors. Compared to anyone on tour now, it's just mm. like is is that is it similar to anyway. tennis? Is there a, is there a, like a terminology that they give it like where you win all four in one year? That's a grand slam. Yeah, so they copy that from tennis. Where if you, okay, won, if you same won, same yeah, thing. Yeah. There's four grand slams, and if you win a a proper grand slam, is having all four in one calendar in one year. One calendar and year, that's exactly. Outrageous, unheard like, of. Yeah. How many people have done that ever? I think the most recent to do it was Nadal. Right. Nadal's done it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. wow. Rafael Nadal is a stud. Mm. Has anybody ever done it in golf? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Pe- people yeah. have. Tiger has. Um, Tiger has, yeah. And, um, in a calendar year? Another one for me, yes, yes, yeah, for sure. Tiger is like a stud and is looking to come back in 2018. He'd be one of my highlights looking forward to 2018, seeing him at this recent tournament that right. he played where he reckons his back's actually okay for the first time in years and – like he's had three back surgeries, so he's Ooh. he's looking back now, going, "I'm coming back in." Like 2018 could be my year, and he competed with these guys really well recently. But another event, though, that was that was massive for me was the Australian Open uh, tennis tournament. Like it was a week before Federer, Federer, Federer winning, and it was the week leading up to me becoming a dad. Ah. So we're we're at home chilling in the aircon the whole time knowing that we can't really go far because it could inevitably happen like at any time. So we watched a shitload of the tennis in the mm. night session where we end up watching um we we're watching the tennis uh Federer v Warinka was the semi-final the two sweet uh two Swiss playing off against each other. So we we're, were sitting there watching the watching the game and uh basically like having um, contractions and shit the whole time, like waiting waiting for him to basically go to the hospital sort of thing. So we stayed to watch the end of the fifth set because we were, it just worked out that way with like the timing between them. Babe, hang on. So fucking hang on. Hang on. Yeah. Yeah, 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 no, 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 no. Break point. Like yeah. it's fucking break point. You just chill. <laughs> just chill. Like imagine that sort of shit. But um, Deuce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, hang on, yeah, hang yeah, on. No, sorry, we yeah. good here. Like, so it was like um, we ended up sort of end up seeing the end of the game before going and then the night of coming home we ended up seeing the final so we watched the probably the missed the first set but got home yeah from right. the hospital for the final and shit too so Just that's all the whole thing started that's all, yeah that's always something that'll stick with me forever too mm. so that, that's that, that was a huge one but yeah him, him and Garcia getting his getting his green jacket and not being a bloke that hasn't won a major now he can sort of settle comfortably and know that He's in that elite company. That was that was really cool too. Mm, mm. Yeah, fuck man, it'd be hard to uh, hard to go past the state of O, the fucking the Queensland comeback in game three. That was uh, that was magic. Two, <laughs> two is where they came back. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah, but put an absolute fucking thumping on them in game oh, three. Man. <laughs> man, oh man, uh, yeah. But yeah, it was just that. It was that real sort of. There was 
And I have to admit, even as a Queenslander, there was an air at the beginning of that series that it was like this could be the turning of the tide. This mm. is like you know all our yeah. best guys are aging. We had the fu- we had Thurston out like yep. goat yep. goat was out and 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 to come back like that and to and to still the series, still put that, it to him. <laughs> That's gold. Bryce is taking a sip of his mm. wine. <laughs> not, not his favorite yeah. moment of twenty seventeen at all. Still just trying to get it to numb me. Like, yeah. Any time it's mentioned, like, uh, fruit, uh, fruit, fruitless years. But, but I mean, you can't you can't look past. Uh, I mean, as much as probably for me, the hype was more than the actual fight itself. Mm. But you know, we had Connor Connor Floyd this yeah. year. I think it was probably on like fucking eight of our of our podcast titles. Of course, <laughs> we, that, we broke it down for months. Yeah, but. that's right up there too. That's yeah. one of the biggest. Like I said, yeah. probably my most special. But yeah. in terms of the biggest, that's a yeah, yeah. reigning defending like that yeah. was an enormous event. Well, mm. we broke that down at nauseam in. Look, it was uh, that was a, a really really fun period of following all that media, and now, now that that fight's finally put to bed, and I hope now McGregor and he's confirmed basically that he's going back to mixed martial arts. So that's a that's a win for us all. Was that in a statement, or I think he said something only recently, like in the last sort of forty eight hours, like okay. no, it's, it's back to MMA now. Awesome. That was always awesome. a, that was always yeah. a one off. But so. he's he's contractually obligated to the UFC still, and and that's the I think the the. The dummy that he threw fans during the the Floyd fight was that you know, hey, I'm a free agent now, and mm. I bought it. You know, like I, I thought, geez, why would the UFC let him out of his you know let him out of his contract to do that? Mm. But then it's only been in recent times where there's been you know the com- the the dialogue about him chatting to Manny Pacquiao and all that sort of stuff around. The Dana just come out and squash that shit. You know, and like he, uh, he's just like that, he's under contract with us. So he and wants he, to fight him, I'll sue him. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Any so idea how many fights? Fight is on that contract left? No, no. Mm. Wouldn't be many because Connor never used to sign for many. Mm. Like he, he's never been an Anderson Silver type where he signed for like eight fights or anything like that. He's always been a like a two-fight sort of contract with Connor. Based on his sort of payments, he'd have a right to be able to come back to the UFC and ask – 20 WME, to IMG, 4. Yeah, I was going to say between 10 to 20. Yeah, that's where, probably what he'd fight for. You're right. Because a lot of his show, that'd be... When people were getting five and six million dollar pays, that was all time for the UFC. Yeah, so, yeah. He's mm. got a right to basically double that. So yep. I think I think they'd probably pay him fifteen, and then he'd be able to get these endorsements, which would match or exceed that. Yeah, he so. he got. What did he get in his last outing in the UFC? Three. As Might have been. At yeah. three, as his like as his show money sort of thing. So mm. you know, and then all the rest of it would just be undisclosed. But forty thousand from Reebok. Yeah, for, don't forget the forty k from Reebok. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that's that, so fucked. They showed the card on the weekend that it's only just fought now, and there's guys that have been in the in the UFC for a long time who have they were given free reign to go out and accrue sponsors of their own for their short would be able to absolutely knock the money out of the yeah, park. Yeah, exactly. I think they owe that to them. It's yeah. almost look. I understand it gives it credibility by giving it a uniform feel, but just make. You could uniform people with sponsors. Like, yeah. Look, you can put a sponsor here and you can put a sponsor here on your shorts. That's do you, all you can do. Hey, did do you, you notice fucking Robbie Lawler had uh, American ethanol on his mouthpiece? Is that above board with Reebok? You can still Probably. put a sponsor on your mouthpiece? Probably. Must be able to. Mm. It, it'd be that's, yeah, that's funny though. Like and He's had them for they, ages. Yeah, as soon as they like uh, flashed to him, it was like he was showing it. Ah, oh. yeah, 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 yeah. Probably Exa- got fucking five grand for exactly. that. Exactly, yeah. yeah. There'd be a price on everything. It was, it was a trip out when that, that sort of information came out based around how much in that Conor, uh, mm. Conor and Floyd fight, how much the sponsorship patches on their shorts and shit mm. went for. You That's know? right. Like, well, this is the waistband is this much. And, Floyd you know? was getting 500 for wearing his hat to the... Yeah. The but did he wear a hat? I think he did, but he had the mask on as well. That's right. He came out with the mask Because he's like, on. this is the ultimate burglary. Yeah. Like, is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he I'm just gonna, was I'm that gonna, confident. He's like, here, yeah. I'm stealing... Three hundred million dollars here, <laughs> yeah, because yeah. of like this guy agreed to on the internet. Like, yeah. That was his mentality towards it. Mm. Yeah. He was like, mm. "Look, I just know I can beat this guy." Yeah, and in the end, did like yeah. I, I watched that fight. I've watched that fight again since it was on. Uh, I've watched the epilogue. Have you seen that on YouTube? No. Like the Showtime, who do who did all the build up. They've gone ahead and done epilogue to it, where they show you a video of <laughs> fight night and like Ooh, co- like D Devlin's got the. Um, Connor Jr. next to her in the pram and she's like, oh, fuck Connor. Like, as he's like starting to get lit up as Floyd's starting to come good and they show their 
the parents and Floyd's kids and shit. It's good, man. Ah, well, sure. well put together piece of yeah. seeing what it's like when you're on the friends and family side of the experience. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Mm. I mean, yeah, it was it like and and like I said, that for me was the the main thing, the main draw for it was all of that sick promo and hype yeah. and everything that went behind it. Because I mean, the fight was the fight was. Good as well, like probably one of the better boxing matches that I've watched. I'm not the biggest boxing fan, um, so obviously you know that's that's where the you know casual fan comes into it for a freak mm. event like that sort of thing. But when I started hearing fucking you know talk lately of him fighting Manny and shit, I was just like, yeah. oh, my dick was absolutely flaccid. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> MMA fans want to see him fight in MMA, you know, yeah. and and because MMA is so much more decisive than boxing. You know, like you're you're much more likely to see Connor knock someone out with four ounce gloves on, or you know, or get finished. And he is one of those dudes that sort of is, you know, kill or be killed sort of thing. Nate Diaz back, mm. so, and that's why people love to tune into him fight. It's because not only does he hype it, but he also like delivers mm. on on fight night. Mm. You know, delivers mm. exciting fights that people want to see. What know? do you what What do you want to see? Like, who do you want to see him fight? <clears throat> what do you think makes sense want, in twenty eighteen? Uh, Tony. Tony. It Tony has to be Tony. Yeah. Tony's got a. Is Does Tony inter- draw though? Does Tony sell? Tony's got the interim belt he when Connor's the me. champion for the for the division. Like it's all, they're almost inevitably stuck there, and let, they would almost have to have Connor relinquish sort of thing. So, I think. Um, Unless he, that, that, that's uh, the yeah, unless that, he that's the, that's the fight to make, and I think uh, I heard um, that most recent. I don't know if it's the most recent, but the Big Brown breakdown with Josh Thompson or whatever, and he's quality. He, yeah, yeah. Josh, Thompson's I like Josh fucking, Thompson. Yeah, man. savage yeah, man. Yeah. I, I like Good that dude. dude. He's Forty, fucking. Yeah, like, and he's still a dime piece yeah. unit. <laughs> yeah. Like Josh, mm. the great, the oh, punk, man. absolutely yeah. punk. Yeah, um, but. Uh, Sharp, and I think there's there's some validity to it. Was saying, you know, GSP took that fight. GSP took that middleweight fight as an opportunistic sort of. Yeah. This is somebody that I think I can I can beat the belt. I don't necessarily have plans of hanging around. Like whether he has you know legitimate health issues at the moment or not, he's he's you know come in made hay while the sun's shining on on an opportunity, and he's gonna and he's gonna sink back into you know. The chill space, and if you know everything went, I don't know if they if they were able to make it. You know, if Connor Connor would obviously have to relinquish his lightweight belt, and then GSP makes his way back down to middleweight, and then they make welterweight. You know, yeah, this, yeah. this time next year or even earlier, maybe they make a, a, a welterweight super fight because both of those guys are huge sells. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah. T, T Ferg isn't isn't the biggest seller yet, and Khabib is you know. Khabib in Russia, maybe that would that would be fucking pretty off the hook. He's he's fighting on December thirty, which um, you know, fingers and toes crossed that he fucking he he makes it to the octagon. Mm. How confident was Josh Thompson that Khabib would just bash everyone? Yeah, Dude. yeah, he was like, he's my fucking... training partner, bro. I feel him every day. I hate it. I hate going with. Him. Like he's just yeah. gonna beat anyone up, man. It's a it's a mismatch. It was like, just a, it was just a question of when for him, not if. Mm. Yeah, he, he, he didn't think like, we'd ever see that fight. Yeah, he's like, no, I don't think we're ever gonna like. Wouldn't surprise me the way the division works out, and if could be about to go to one seventy and shit like that. Yeah, so and he's from, like, that's the thing. I just hope he can make fucking. Mm. He's got to fight Edson Barbosa, man. but uh, I personally think that Khabib will smash Edson Barbosa, man. Yeah, I do, yeah. Like, I, and I love Edson. Like, I feel like Big Brown, man. I'm just throwing him under the bus, honey. I get squashed, and then, but but I love him. Like that's yeah. Big Brown. <laughs> that's Big Brown's go to. <laughs> but just think, script. Uh, Khabib's wrestling is just going to be too strong for, for him. Yeah. And if he gets his hold of him, he's going to end up like Michael Johnson. Like everybody that's ever fought Khabib. Mm. Like everybody that Khabib has ever fought, even through to, you know, 170-pound title challenger Rafael Dos Anjos. Mm. Like he manhandled him, you know. Man, he, he's undefeated, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Khabib. Oh, did you see, yeah. uh, like, did you see RDA Robbie on the weekend? No, no, I didn't, I didn't see it. But, he looked um, great. RDA, RDA looked yeah. great, man. Yeah, he was. He he's did. arrived at one seventy. Is he looked rejuvenated and energetic? Like he went twenty five hard minutes, man. Yeah, you don't fight Robbie yeah. Lawler and go twenty five with it just being good point. No, mm, good point. Yeah. Like it's, but it's, um, early in one of those rounds, it it the commentators were calling it was from a leg kick, but um, uh, RDA was chopping at his. Uh, I can't remember which leg. It, I think it was his right leg, whichever mm. his lead leg was. 
But well, Robbie, he, it's his right. Yeah. Right, yeah. But he actually had something going on with his left leg. It looked like his knee. And it, every time he'd go back to his corner, they were sort of like being really sort of surreptitious about the shit that they were saying because it was obviously like some sort of issue that was going on. He said, I, I, when I went down, that something strange happened to the knee and he was kind of, his coach was like whispering in his ear and stuff like that away from the camera so yeah, none of the gotcha. commentators could actually hear it or it could get to any of the doctors. But I think by about the third or the fourth round, you could see that he legit couldn't move on it anymore. He was like, he was pretty much propping himself up on the back of the cage so that like because every time he'd come forward and he'd have to move that left leg it'd just buckle out under Ah. him and he couldn't even like stand up anymore so he had no forward attack he just had to wait for rda to come to him still just fucking throwing bombs like it was going out of style yeah just the the fucking toughest individual like in the second there was um he, there was he blew his wad for like 23 seconds rda poured on this combo that was um I think it was either 48 or 55 punches mm. in, in like in it the was. space of fucking 20 seconds or something like that. RDA did. Yeah. RDA did. 23 just seconds. They timed it. Completely fucking like emptied his, emptied his tank, just fucking throwing full 100% behind every single shot. Ripping to the body. Robbie's right. just fucking like ducking and weaving and just like blocking a lot of them, mm, but copping a lot of them as well, man. And then everyone was saying, oh, you know, fucking RDA is going to have completely yeah, gassed himself he blew his out wad. here. Yeah. But to his credit, man, his his cardio is not to be <laughs> fucked with. He went for another fucking three hard rounds right. after that. Yeah. God damn it. God yeah. damn it. It was a hell of a fucking grinding fight, man. It was <laughs> like, God. I mean, never is there a fight with Robbie Lawler where, where it looks like you get off easy. You know, mm. it's, it's always that fucking... Does he fight T. Wood? Proper war. Or does he fight Covington? Don't know. Yeah, I yeah. saw Covington was calling for it, but I also saw Wonderboy was throwing his name in the mix. Yeah, saying. Wonderboy. Wonderboy has no interest for me whatsoever. You know, uh, uh, against Woodley or anything like yeah. that. You know, Who's like on? I mean, you cannot sell that. A he third looked. Time. He looked great in his most recent. Performance. Yeah, he did. Like, he who did, was that again? He did. Who, um, uh, who did he fight? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, no, P- Pons and Ibio actually right. called for the title shot after he <laughs> beat. Um, <laughs> Pump your brakes, man. That's, that's <laughs> Mike. <laughs> that's Mike Perry. Like Mike Perry. Man. How did He's that like, one go down? He got twenty nine, twenty eight. Right. Yeah. 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 But yeah. yeah. Um, he got beat Pe- up from what I saw. Perry looked Perry, Perry looked good in the um in the first couple yeah. of rounds. It was definitely like he was controlling the octagon and um and the crowd was behind Perry big time. Yeah. Like mm. He's obviously a favourite, but I, I was I gotta admit I've, I've warmed to him as well. I, I was rooting for him, but um just couldn't get it done. He just yeah, he he got like yeah, just Man. Just a nasty grinding sort of fucking victory again. Like how was yeah. how was Glover? Like I I had a bet on the card, but ended up losing when Ricardo Lamas got knocked out. Yeah, like, that's a huge yeah. upset. Yeah, like, huge. I, I threw huge La- I threw KO Lamas from in. that Emmett dude as well. Is he a um? Is he a T- team alpha male? Team alpha male. Is yeah. he? Yeah, wrong. And apparently they were saying that because uh, obviously fucking two of the other dudes on Team Alpha Male have fought. Lamas before, so he had yeah. that he had that insight. Same like, thing as that uh, Cody Nola guys. versus Dom, man. It was like mm. the yeah. he's been Dom thirty times in training. Yeah, camp, yeah, so yeah like, that's yeah. that um yeah. that fucking TJ Cody No Love UFC two seventeen is probably on one of my highlights for twenty seventeen, man. Yeah, that or, was a or card. forever in UFC. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it served up yeah. a card and a half. You yeah. know, it's funny like talking about Conor McGregor and and the whole boxing thing and and. I saw um I saw like a little snippet video on Instagram of Dana White in some sort of media scrum and saying how you know he wasn't sure if Connor was going to come back and how money changes absolutely everything you know and it's and it's a completely different thing when you're up and coming and hungry to to be willing in there to get like to be willing to go in there to put it all on the line versus when you've got a hundred million dollars sitting in the bank fucking four cards out the front a yacht out the back and 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 whatever else to find that motivation to get in there and fucking get bashed yeah but i thought it was funny after that ufc 217 and i think he's done it from a couple of subsequent cards like the the Max Holloway um, Aldo rematch that just was as well. You notice Connor will put like an like an Instagram post or something that's that's like you know his after the Aldo Max fight it was something like to do with him beating Max after two seventeen yeah. it was something to do with like you know and I think that mm. a, a guy like that the fucking the you know the there's a portion that the the money is not going to bring you it's that 
fucking adrenaline junkie rush of standing there in front of all mm. of those people fucking screaming your name, mm. being the winner, being the champion, like coming in. And I think there's that that element there to Connor that like being a, you know, 29-year-old dude in the middle of his fighting prime, I don't think there's any money that's going to keep him from fighting at least a couple more times. Yeah, you know yeah. It's, it's why people fight into their 40s and shit. Yeah. Like, did you see it? He, one, one of the... Uh, MMA ones that I saw this week was, and it explains to me a simple point. Michael Bisping had to pay four hundred thousand yeah, dollars to an ex-manager manager. of him, mate, and that is the exact reason why he fought Kelvin Gastelum. True. Ah, uh, you know I mean? yeah. Has to be. Yep. Has to be to back up on eleven days after getting choked out by GSP. And what was a tough fight, man? Like yeah. That was a, whether he thought he took damage or not, he did. Like both yeah. both guys got punched in the face, good and proper in that fight. That was a GSP Bisping was awesome. Like I, I love the shit out of that. Yeah, fight. yeah. And uh, to see Bisping get knocked, uh, to get choked out, legit unconscious, and then backing up and fighting a young, hungry bull in China. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. bull in a China shop, legitimately. Yeah. Like yeah. Right, going to China to fight Kelvin Gastelum after having to fly from yeah. America back to LA, it then train, then fly no over there. Yeah, and I, I heard That's some to get of a his... check to pay this guy that he owes. Mate. I heard yeah. some of his logic saying that you know basically. He was already in peak condition, and it was one training camp, but two fights, and that and that sort of thing. Where there's probably like some some validity to that, but yeah. it was just really confusing move. Mm. You were like, "Fuck, he's fighting soon." When you heard it announced, and then it was like, "Holy shit, that card's on this weekend!" Yeah. Like he's fighting fucking again. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he's backing Starched. up like tournament spec, Starched. and yeah, Starched. yeah, did not go well. Bang, yeah. little little Kane, and, and just all of a sudden, like puts himself. Like way out of contention for that. Yeah, for that but belt, but he's you know? already said that he was going to have his retirement fight in March in Manchester anyway. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you know, like, why not squeeze another one in? Especially like you said, Briss. You mm. know, like if you know you're about to part with four hundred k US, you know, absolutely do, do this one for free. Yeah, because ju- that'd be Bisping. He'd be on that sort of money. Man. Absolutely, he, he'd get he would big be. backroom bonuses. Yeah, shit, definitely. Man. He'd probably be on four hundred k. And he's and point. he's got yeah. the career in presenting. No worries, man. He's mm, got exactly. the gift of the gab. Like exactly. he, he's one of the the select few that get that gig. You know what I mean? Fucking headbutt. Yeah. It was a headbutt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rock old man. Yeah, and you got to look at, at that at a certain point as it's in my interest to actually protect my intellectual ability and my communication yeah. skills and shit mm. like that for yeah. the next phase of my livelihood, you know? Exactly. But then if you, there's some of them just get a rough deal where it's, you know, that they don't have the, the, the social law, you know? Mm. Verbal abilities to be able to do that. So totally. To, yeah. To Yol. Like few, what are you going? Yeah. <laughs> Yol. Yol. Well, he, he might be doing like some Michael po- beat me. post-career thing in Cuba. I but, love uh, you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely not in English. That's for Strap sure. Strap your uh, your hat on for 2018. If I throw, I'll throw a couple of weight classes at you. I won't. I won't do all of them. You could say at the end of 2018. Who the champions will be in these divisions? Like, I'd let me bring up the opinion. um, let me bring up the full roster of the weight. Yep. Weight so we know we're Fire her up. So we go. So ba- based on what we think, it'll just give us a, some credibility in our picks next year. Imagine if we nail all of them. Like, oh, this person will be champ. This person will for, be champ. Yeah. There'd be a betting app that you could put but this on. So let's every, face everyone it, right. should jump on and get on this heavy journey. Like we probably will though, right? Like, yeah. Do you reckon? Well, obviously, do you want to start out at, at the bottom? Do you reckon Dim- Demetrius will still have the title, or do you reckon he loses it to TJ? Or do you think he loses it to Ben Win? Oh, absolutely, man! And that fight might materialise real soon because he's on two two one. Ben, ben Win got a fight in Perth. He's another, another guest of two thousand and seventeen. I think this guy's just on the up, man. We it, see him grinding on his social media every day, man. And this kid. With win, I say kid, and he's fucking our age. With, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Dana. Like, am I Dana? Like, uh, <laughs> he fucking, he's on the up. Man. But with a win yeah. there, I, like, I think yeah. If win wins, he's, <laughs> if win wins, he is guaranteed a title shot. Surely, Big time. he's guaranteed the shot at DJ and and and, and TJ. And then, then Rockold beats. Oh, Whitaker beats Rockold, and we've got two Aussie champs. Yeah, like, imagine that. unbelievable. Uh, that would be got, something. We've got we've got the rankings coming up here. We'll yeah. throw our hats into the ring, but um, yeah. Let me just reach for the sports almanac. Oh yeah, the one thirty five yeah. pound division will be a difficult one to call. Absolutely, Dillashaw. very difficult to call. One thirty five. Yeah, you reckon? Yeah, 
Dillashaw, man. Dillashaw? Yeah. Yeah. So it's Cody tagged him in that. Though. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh. I, I, honestly, though, you, you could almost make a strong case for even Dominic Cruz. Mm. Like, uh, or Marlon. Coming, yeah, Marlon, Marlon Morales. Yeah, absolutely. He is a savage. Although he, he's, he lost his first... His first fight, fight mm. out, but... Just starched yeah. Aljamain Sterling but like two weeks ago. Frankie Edgar, he is a, uh, a training partner of him and um, rates him unbelievably. Says mm. that he's a monster. And if Frankie Edgar is calling you a monster, you know your mm. skills are legit. You reckon you know? we'd ever see Frankie cut back down? Yeah, I think you could potentially, mm. potentially see it. He's if all, he's going to do it, he needs to do it. He like, needs to do it soon. It's, he's not getting any younger. Uh, yeah, but he's but he's still at the very top of the game. Mm. You know, it's crazy. It's, it should be his title shot. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely should, and I think it still will be. You know, but um, but it's incredible how lo- how much longevity Frankie Edgar has really had it out of his career. Thirty five, Danny. Who's the champ at the end of uh, the end of twenty eighteen? This time next year. Yeah, I don't know. I think maybe TJ makes that makes that weight down to fight to fight uh, DJ, and then I could see Cody stepping in. But I don't know. I don't know if TJ's gonna. I don't think he'll stay if he wins yeah. it. It'll be a GSP sort of spec. Yeah, I'm a 35er, yeah. but I told you I'd bash that guy. Yeah, like, and I think he could beat Demetrius. Oh, he I absolutely he could, can. Like. It'll just be really interesting to see how he. It's a great fight. Maintains his cardio at that lighter weight class because mm. TJ's got incredible cardio, so oh. I've got no reason to doubt mm. him. No, but that's a, a lot more weight. Another yeah. 10 pounds is a lot more weight. Oh, you know, it is, isn't it? And he's not he's, he's not shredded. a small 35er. You no. know, like I mean, he's shredded with proper proper big legs on him and all sorts of stuff. You know, mate, I'm willing to throw. Dillashaw in as the champion at the end of 2018. I'm, I'm happy, happy to lock that in. I think he'll be the 135 champion at the end of the yeah. end of the year. He'll yeah. pro- he might fight Dom again in 2018. Oh, and, he'll uh, definitely will. Yeah. I think he could uh, he could get him. Yeah, and I'm a huge Cruz fan, but I think it could be a changing in the guard. Yeah, sort of. yeah, could be one all. I'm I'm going I'm going to go with um with Dominic Cruz there. I think that Bruce, yeah, nice. yeah. I think that he's just always really smart with his career. In I mean, obviously he battles injuries and and he does the commentary and all that sort of stuff. But we've seen him take long absences away from fighting before and just come up, come back and look incredible. You know, so Dom's a real intelligent guy. He doesn't sort of come back unless he's you know on top of his game. And I reckon you'll, you'll see Dominic Cruz with that strap at some stage in two thousand eighteen. Forty five. And still Max. Really? Yeah, and I've, still, I've, I've always said Frankie still. Edgar giving problems to McGregor and all this sort of stuff. Like, I know I've said that stuff in the past, but this guy's only 26. Yeah. And he's still doing it. Like, he's getting, he's only going to get better. That's the thing with Max. Like, the more time he puts in, I think Frankie can absolutely cause him some problems. And if, that, if those two fought, I'd love to see Frankie win. Mm. You know, I would love to see Frankie as a two-time champion. But After I think Max uh, is too too young and strong. And he's like, Frankie might be able to get him down, but can he keep him down? And Max's stand-up is causing problems for, for absolutely everyone. everyone. Yeah. Because yeah. when the ref says go, it's the same over 25 minutes where Max's volume in cardio is ridiculous. Yeah. He's this Hawaiian string bean... Warrior, yeah, like just bringing it every time, and just seems to be improving with so, an um, incredible chin. Mm, you know, with oh, incre- yeah. that young chin that you know, like you can just eat shots to give shots. Mm, you know, mm. and give them twice as hard and, and in twice as much volume. You could, I could honestly imagine, man, seeing McGregor beating Tony Ferguson at fifty-five, and maybe Max even nudging in there for a shot yeah, at fifty-five. Wow. If be they something. tried to. Promote Max Holloway yeah. as the two weight world champion. Right, He's right, a really good rematch. guy. I reckon that yeah. you're yeah. On, you're onto mm. something with that. If uh, uh, no doubt that Connor has to defend that belt, you know, has at, at 55 has to defend that belt. Or Dan- Dana up. wouldn't even entertain mm. that GSP. And you mean a two weight world champion and never defending a belt? Yeah, you know, either of them. Yeah, I think exactly. for his like his street cred is awesome, but. Defended a couple of times. Be one of those champions. Yeah, where yeah definitely. John Jones has done it. Anderson's done it. GSP's done it. Yeah. All the champions have to do it. If you, if you won two, hey, it's epic. Well done to you. But build a legacy now, mate. Yeah. Like, mm. Go on with it. You savage. But exactly like what Danny was saying before, I reckon that belt means nothing to Connor. I reckon it, or like the, the titles and all that sort of stuff, he couldn't give a fuck about. It would just be all about like, hey, listen, I'll trade this belt – for an extra fifteen million dollars, you know, like I mean, and a way add, bigger audience, yeah, and a way, and a way bigger, bigger show, exactly, yeah. you know, yeah, 
But I mean, he, it, I think um, but it's just that the belt so, helps him to get those. So do you paydays. think he's champion at fifty five at the end of next no, year? No, definitely not. No? Yeah, no. no. Who, who gets no. that one? We were talking. Will someone 55. beat him for it? Is that what you mean? Or yeah, I, I think I think, think Tony no, Ferguson would even beat him. I think he I, goes I, I the. Like is it w, WMG? What's the? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think he goes go, goes that model, and it's just freak fights from here on out for Connor. I don't, I don't know if it's if he's playing into the sort of purest fan thing of you know defend your belt like mm. earn your stripe that sort of shit he's like give me the biggest show give me the biggest paycheck mm. like give me the biggest promo like promo behind it sort of thing and on w- 45 sorry to cut you off but sorry. i think after watching his last performance brian ortega has to be in that conversation man mm. that mm. fucking like jumping crazy guillotine choke that he did was like fucking scary man mm. like he Can deserves the, the the spider fucking moniker now cubs for mine, a black belt yeah yeah oh. That's yeah, and, a, and a good one, you know. Like, I mean, I submitted people with some cool, you know, submissions. Many yeah. and many. I think a time. for he I think no for scrum. mine, he's he's in in like TS fucking conversations Cause now because he's, yeah. he's undefeated. Yeah, yeah. he's won everything. Yeah, man. yeah. He's yeah. Had to, and he's had a couple of hard fights to get here. And, yeah. and in stylistically against Max, I reckon that's a cool fight. Yeah, man. Oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah, here we go. Look. I'm going to grapple with this Harley. Like, that, can... That's where Max needs to, I, I'd like to see him proven, is, is in the takedown department. Is mm. in the, you know, that's where Frankie def- was awesome for Defending it. doubles. And, you know, that, that was the big question around Connor. And then we started to see him getting put on his back by Mendez and all that sort of stuff. So you I really want to see that question week. answered. I actually watched that fight. On Connor uh, versus Chad Mendes. Yeah, ah, yeah, yeah. Scrolling that, through YouTube on the, that was on the a smart bum, TV, man. That, that just was a good fucking fight. He gave it was an awesome Connor and tough, was an tough awesome, night out awesome for sure. Up, yeah, up there with like, I was probably second to Nate in terms of the hardest fight he's ever had. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah, like, yeah. Chad was with, with him like on 10 days. And that's where Josh Thompson saw that and just thought Khabib would just yeah. s- squash him. And like, and that that's the thing that gets really interesting is when Khabib does fight because the way that obviously UFC works is all based around hype, you know? Like, I mean, so if you want to ride that hype train from your last fight into your next fight, you know, like, or you want to, you know, like st- streamline it. But Tony Ferguson, like, Although all of the hype was behind him, you know, getting that interim title, if Khabib comes out and just dominates, you know, like um, uh, Edson. Edson, all of that hype is going to be on Khabib versus Connor, and then Connor effectively, really, I reckon, gets to choose between those two. It, or it, Khabib Tony, do they do they make that and let Connor wait it out? Because that because that was meant to be. That fight should have already happened if it wasn't for mm. Khabib missing mm. the way. That was a huge letdown for twenty seventeen. That would have been a massive. Fight and still would be to this day like that. So twenty eighteen, Tony for 55. Is, Tony is That's a, a legit, I love watching Tony. He's legit a, number one contender. When is when has Tony yeah. Ferguson been in a, a snoozer? Yeah, yeah. That brings it every single time. Whether he's getting beaten up and on the ba- on his back trying shit, or he's pouring it on someone, Tony Ferguson is dynamic and yeah. For fifty five, as much because uh, I've I've been saying it for years, so it'd be remiss mm. of me not to predict fucking Khabib to have the title in twenty eighteen. Mm. Like yeah. I've been calling him for years, but he just fucking can't seem to get to the <laughs> yeah. octagon. But yeah. Tiramisu gets <laughs> <in the> way. <laughs> I've, uh, I've seen. Uh, I I don't think Tony would try and fuck with Connor on the feet at all, man. I'd be think he'd be shooting in at all sorts of those like. Imanari roles. Yeah, he was trying he Rory. Shit, oh, yeah. Who did he try that on? Not Rory McDonald. I've seen Rory do those, but um, was Edson. He fought Edson yeah. and was shooting in at his legs a lot. Yeah. I, yeah. I think he could try try that route where he's like, if I can get this guy to the ground, I can catch him. Exactly. And I, and I know it. Yeah. And I think Tony can't. Connor, like, Connor Tony's, would know that too. Tony's an Eddie Bravo black belt, like proper in that sort of like EBI rolling scene and shit like yeah. that, man. So he needs to know. And that's what anybody who gets in there with Conor McGregor needs to be cautious of, even even Khabib, mm. you know, because Khabib's going to chow sun in him. He's going to come out and just charge him and, and try and get hands on him and then just up and down, you know. Like, mm. But um, obviously Conor's going to be looking for that chin when he comes wading forward. 170? 170 is interesting, man. That's like it went from being an absolute uh, – it still is a shark tank, but just it's different, so different sharks circling, you know what I mean? You got Darren Till waiting in the wings there. You yeah. got fucking Colby Covington on the on the rise. Kamar Usman, like uh, they got eleven there. Neil Magny it? and um, Carlos are going at it on December thirty. Really? Is yeah. that on that card? Yeah, that's wow. on that card that's as awesome. well. We could be talking about those guys next year and they're like, gonna... we're talking about the seventeenth, the eighteenth, the nineteenth, like yeah. the yeah. guy Mate, in the I'm world. going uh yeah. 
Yancey to be champ. Yeah. Like, <laughs> shout out. Like, no, I'm, I reckon uh, Darren Till will be 170 champion by the end of next year. Yeah. He, he's one KO, one KO away from getting himself right in that conversation. Yeah, yeah. Like, and he's massive. And he's huge. Like he, he weighed over massive. 200 pounds when he fought uh, yeah. recently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cowboy, sorry. Cowboy. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah, right. He beat him on Cowboy the up. Broke his yeah. nose. Yeah, that was brutal. And then fucking did, had the had the shout out on Mike Perry. You know I'm at the fight. That's right. Yeah. 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 So yeah, that's that's he, probably he yeah, yeah. That's yeah. probably not going to happen. What now. about no. mi- what about middleweight? <sighs> shout middleweight. out Rob. Fucking did you see any of uh, uh, the beef um, like shit shit talk that Luke Luke's Luke Rockhold's been throwing at um, nah. Kevin Gastelum and shit. Call oh, it, Kevin call, Gastelum calling him a midget and shit. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. I saw that. <laughs> and the funny thing is, is is, is like engaging in wars of words with, I and mean, he's got a fight booked, yeah. you know. But the the war of words is with somebody who's not even like yeah. he's not even fighting yet. It's interesting the whole thing that's um, cool transpired that. with AKA and shit. Like, mm. yeah, he, he's Josh Thompson was good for that yeah. sort of insight, yeah. and he's training because Rockhold's training exclusively with Henry Hoof now. And, oh, and I read something today where he was saying that. Um, because cause basically DC was saying, like, you can't fucking, you know, Vol- tr- training with somebody else. And because cause Vulcan is training there. Yeah. Vulcan Ozdemir yeah. trains at that same gym. So Rockhold's there sparring with Vulcan when he's like, man, I'm, I'm Daniel Cormier, man. I'm team captain at AKA. Like, yeah. this is your gym. Yeah. What are you fucking doing over there tuning up that guy? It'd be like DC to... bringing in Rob Whitaker to spar and yeah, shit like Yeah, that. yeah. Yeah, I'm hel- you're yeah. helping. You're a real good fighter, man. And you're helping him tune up my opponent. Like, you're, yeah. a- you're AKA. Yeah. Like, yeah, gotcha. So, yeah, a bit of that sort of shit to right. it, man. And so, like, yeah, I don't know. You got to wonder not having fucking the likes of DC and Kane and fucking those mm. boys to, like, is, is I don't yeah. know. But it, apparently Henry Hooft is, like, you know, meant to give him the, you know, the holes that, you know, Bisping and shit mm. exploited, like, the at- advantage there sort of thing, pick up his game a yeah. little bit. But, yeah, I don't know. That That's an interesting one. Who have you got in Rob fucking Rockhold? I reckon, I, I personally think, um, all by his side, that Rob will catch him. I just think that, you know, that, yeah, Luke Rockhold striking is, is absolutely, you know, vicious, but I think it's mainly based around the kicks. And I think mm. if Rob can sort of find his chin and people have found Rob's chin, uh, with, found Rockhold's chin, I think, mm. he'll, I think he'll put him to sleep. That's Rob's mm. go, man. Yeah. Like Rob yeah. has found everyone at 85 so mm. far. <laughs> exactly. Like, and it was interesting to hear Josh Thompson say that, like, because he trained with him a fuckload at AKA, saying that basically he is super arrogant, you know what I mean? And, and you saw that massively in that Bisping rematch when he got caught. Like, mm. he was just – he looked bored in there, man. Like, he looked uninterested and just had his hands down and just – because you saw what, like, you know, what a fucking performance he put on in Sydney the first mm. time, just dominant. Ended but him. But that, for me, was – that was like, you know, classic Luke Rockhold was – he would always – he wouldn't even engage pretty much until the second round. The whole first round would be this feeling out process where he would just like, you know, mm. st- stand com- like stand just out of range so he'd get the timing down. He wouldn't he wouldn't put anything into any of his shots or or overcommit to anything. And then as soon as he had that timing worked out, almost like Anderson Silverspec, mm. he'd fucking turn up that aggression mm, and then yeah. and then just put put the lights out. But like, yeah, that um, who did he fight? David Branch Ooh. fucking caught him like early and and Bisping, you know, and, and, and those are fucking knockouts, man. Those are knockouts v- at, th- at 30 years and, old. And like. Rob and Rob would sleep David Branch. Exactly. Rob's yeah. got that fucking Quickly. 25-year-old bang, bang. fucking yeah. Yeah. fist he, behind he's him. In and you know out. I mean? He's like, in and out. He is a scary prospect. I'll, I'll say Rob will be the champion at, yeah. the, at the end of next year. And I, I think that's a, at the end of next year. That, that's that's yeah. The like he, he might fight. He'll win when's this fight the, when's in Feb. The fight? Feb. 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 So. Say he gets one more in in that time and then might fight on a New Year's card or something like mm. that. But yeah, I'd, I'd say Rob will still be champion, man. He can beat he can beat people in that lineup. There's honestly a chance where he may fight Kelvin Gastelum. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, most definitely. Who? And wouldn't that be something? Who, Rob, Rob Whitaker. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, Weidman, Weidman, line, be, right? Weidman beat yeah. Gastelum, but Weidman might have to fight Jacare or something like that. Like, yeah, like Weidman's two, nowhere yeah. near it. You know, no, like, I mean, he, I mean no. he's he's rated above though Gastelum at the moment though. But yeah, does Weidman? What do we see from Weidman in the next couple of years, man? Is uh, he, I feel like he's he's a bit 
lack of a shadow of his former self, man. I feel like he took some real damage in, the, mm. in those couple of losses. The, that brutal knee from Yol, was it? It was, yeah. And yeah, then yeah. and then the rock hold fucking ground and pound. I think he just I think he just needs a couple of confidence. And fights. then he took damage again in Maybe. Gastelum fight. Like yeah. Gastelum rocked him yeah. in that fight. He got clipped in that fight. But he beat he beat he, he did. I'm he guessing. did he subbed him. Man. Well, you know, there I guess you yeah, Weidman is a, still a monster on the yeah, ground. Yeah, yeah. I wish Weidman would go back to getting the ground. He got obsessed for mine anyway with striking. Striking once he knocked out Anderson Silver and shit. It's like, no nah, man, you're a grappler here with really good ground and pound. Yeah. Like, what are you all American you going, yeah. wrestler? Well, you got Anderson, yeah, but you know how you got Anderson, mate. Like, yeah. Come on, that sort of went. Like, I knocked out Anderson Silver and he goes out, tries striking with a bunch of savages and ends up punchy. Yeah. I know, <laughs> like you know, I know it's got to be different for combat athletes because it's it's so much more ingrained in the nature of the sport. But even when you know. We had Drew Mitchell on here and he was talking about the time when he busted his ankle and the not just the physical recovery but the psychological recovery that mm. goes with a really bad injury like that. You've got to wonder, man, like getting your fucking light shut out like really, really badly like we've seen happen to Weidman, we've seen happen to a lot of other fighters. Surely that just, you know, can you think of any examples of somebody who's been, you know, bashed really fucking badly a couple of times and then has gone on a tear after that? Heaps of people. Absolutely heaps of people mm. in the US have done but that. But to like, you know, make another Tony shot Fer- at the Tony title. Ferguson would, would be an example of that. Like he's he's definitely copped a... I've seen him cop a hiding to somebody at mm. some stage. Yeah. Yeah. Matt Brown. Yeah. He, he went yeah, on yeah, a, a people, huge, a huge yeah. like win at, streak at, the, at some at stage. At the elite yeah. level, even... Um, some even, people just yeah. stick together. Even take Chale, someone, Chale, son. Even Chale, like yeah. the ro- like. I, granted, I haven't watched Gunner, m- much of his Gunner's stuff. Been in, beat up, but yeah, but I'm talking. I'm talking like the horrific ones. I'm talking like uh, Crime R- scene. Rory McDonald. Bigfoot. Like, do you reckon Rory McDonald's been the same since that fucking Robbie oh, fuck Robbie yeah. fight? Mate, he's gone over to Bellator and has, has fought really hard. I think Rory has still got. Mate, if they can get if they him. can get Rory McDonald versus Douglas Lima done, that that's it's, it's like, done. I'm it, pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Really? I'm pretty sure it's locked. Ah, like, yeah, that's like, booked in for I'm, 2018. I think so. Oh, pretty, yeah. damn, son. I'm pretty sure. Because that that quite on on its day, or th- there's an argument to be made for it anyway. That that is the you know could potentially be the best 170 pounder on the Rory, planet. Rory McDonald. Who's this other bloke? Excuse my. L- uh, Lima is a Douglas Lima. Really, really, really well-rounded dude. A good stand-up fighter in Bellator. That's sort of in the sort of like is. Competed with like Paul Daly and some of the high end mm. UFC guys that have gone over to Bellator. Yeah, he right. sort of banged it out with those dudes, and, and it's solid. Like if he went into the to the UFC, he'd fit in in the top ten and shit. Easy, and compete yeah. at yeah. one seventy, yeah, at one seventy, yeah. He'd yeah. fight hard against some of those dudes. See, um, Rory even wanted a spot in that heavyweight oh, tourney. <laughs> dude, <laughs> man, he's hardcore, eh? Yeah, man, absolutely super hard. Was happy to do it, and Ch- to like do it. I know, like Chael's gone in, man. Yeah, he, Chael's gone in. Ballsy for him. He's got to fight Rampage in in the first match in yeah, that yeah. Bellator heavyweight tournament. And that's, I can't believe you said Rampage has to cut. I, I to think make he. I think he will anyway. Wow. I, I think he, he he looked enormous in those at that press yeah. conference and shit, man. He looked like a fucking. Big boy, because yeah. you know, Ch- Chael would be walking around. He's, Chael said he wants to fight at two sixteen. Is what he's going to fight right. at. He's like, I can, is that all? He goes, I might lose a couple of pounds and get to two sixteen. He goes, I just want to be in that optimum. I think that yeah. could be the best for me here. And that's where Bader and King Mo and those guys are in that that's tournament. True. Man, where that's true. It seems funny to me though in the matchmaking. I don't I know. I don't know why Bader. they did it, I, and I don't know why they've done it. I think these dudes should have been on opposite sides of the draw because it probably could have been a likely grand final. In this, yeah, they did Mitrione v Nelson in the first round uh, of this tournament. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. Is that not one and two seed in this tournament? You got Fedor, Frank Mir, King Mo, Beta, Chael Sonnen, and Rampage. Fuck. Are those two not the yeah, number one and two mate, seeds? Put them on the other side. Maybe Frank Mir off the TRT you could get slept. Yeah. Fedor maybe on the on the way out. Maybe Mitrione Fedor was pretty wild. Yeah. They both dropped each other. So and anything like always happens Fedor, at heavyweight. Yeah. Anything always happens at heavyweight. And and who does Frank Fe- who does legit? Fedor get in the first round in that? Frank Mir, I think he's got. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd watch the shit. Oh, out bro, of that, uh, absolutely. Fedor v absolutely, Mir, like, yeah. Frank Fuck. Mears, one of those stalwarts. Dan Henderson that, v Fedor, how good was that? Yeah, dude? but the thing of it is, is that even though it's a heavyweight tournament, it's sort of like you don't have any Francis and Garnu sort of characters that are in that sort of lineup to the point where a guy, a over beefed up 
205 pounder like Rampage could potentially take it out. Dude. You know, like, I mean, could potentially just sleep a couple of guys, get his way to the final, and then you know have more gas in the tank than bloody Roy Nelson. You, you mentioned know? before uh, we get to yeah, Francis, yeah. give me because it'd be remiss of us not to mention the women. So give me quick, quick, rapid fire. Who, who's your your twenty eighteen champs for the three women's divisions? Jeez, Joanna. Oh well, obviously Cyborg just has that strap as long as she wants it. You for. don't reckon Holly? Uh, Gives her a run no, for money? Not, not even in the slightest. No, I don't think so yeah, at all. I'd, I'd say Cyborg would be able to wear her down in a stand-up fight. I'd Cyborg? Do, you reckon Rose do. Rose holds on to it? No, I'd say Joanna will have the belt at the end of Joanna gets it back? Yeah, yeah you reckon yeah. Joanna gets it back? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I might, might have got might, Had a terrible weight cut from all reports. Like right. Hospital-esque like, yeah, sort of gotcha, thing. Like, gotcha. oh, look, she's cut the management team that she was with. Like, she's like, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, like, I think she might have tried something new. And was like, no, I'm, ne- I'm never cutting weight or b- being associated with any of those guys ever again. Uh, like, that, that was a fucking yeah. nightmare. Like, yeah, what was that? Like, yeah. Far and ended up getting beat down. I think she could, there'll be, inevitably be a rematch. I think she's almost, would she fight five or six times for defences? She probably deserves an automatic rematch. 100% mm. she does. Got, yeah, got definitely. Caught. There's, definitely. Uh, yeah. I'd rather see that than anyone else in that list. Yeah, yeah that'll be a for, tricky mental one. Police Herrig v. From. Rose, like anyone. Like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Women's flyweight. I basically know no one other than a homegrown hero, Beck Rawlins. Yeah. So shout out Beck, yeah. fucking yeah. Ready, get, get ready that back. fucking strap. Yeah, yeah. Re- read that message. <laughs> <laughs> shout out. There's yeah. a there's a guest spot if you if you ever got the time. Um, and light heavyweight, fucking DC's no, it's got. Hard. Is it's DC hard. booked for Vulcan? Yeah, depends if DC's still going at I this time think, next. Year, I don't think know? he is because when uh, Glover won on the weekend, he called DC out. He was like, you yeah, know, mutual nah. respect, but he's like, let, let no, the old he's, guys bang. He's, he's booked for that. Yeah, um, Glover's sleeping under a rock, man. That's, yeah, that's <laughs> a lot. he's booked for that. Um, that's Glover's CTE. Man. That uh, Francis Ngannou <laughs> versus Stipe card. Glover is or DC is? DC and Vulcan uh, is, is that the on that card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stacked. What a, what a card. Stacked. Boston. They always take Dana. By, yeah, yeah Dana loves, going, loves getting, Boston, man. Getting it by the ball. Yeah. 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 205 is a tough one, eh? It's like uh, you take John out of there and there's not a whole lot of star power. But um, I'll go uh, Beast in 25 8. Yeah, <laughs> Corey Anderson. Be Corey chair. Anderson. <laughs> fuck yeah. You can go on the shoot. OSP. He can make a no. run for it. No. Nah. Nah, he just never seems to get yeah. it together at the right time. Yeah, I, no, I, I, it's I, either one of the top two there on the if page. You, if you're on, no one only, else beats them. Yeah, yeah. we're only Alexander talking 12 Gustafson. months. Yeah, I think DC still has it. Stipe Ngannou has been made. Ngannou, oh shit, I, I'm all aboard the hype train for him. Uh, but you listen to Stipe, he was on Joe Rogan's MMA potty like yeah, this I week. And he's one, like, yeah. he's a big puncher, man. I fought Mark Hunt, I fought JDS, like. Stipe isn't getting caught up in it at all. He's like, yeah. I've, I've fought dude that punched really hard. Man. Yeah. I'm good, but see, to Francis me, to is me, a it, fucking monster. Yeah. To me, like, it sounded like fighter talk, man. I it think, was, it was, yeah. and he has he has to say that. But at the same yeah. time, I think he's sort of he's a pretty relaxed customer, Stipe, by the sound of it. Like, I think, oh fuck yeah, he's not getting caught up in it. But the second he feels it, he'll know about it. Yeah, in my opinion. Like, yeah. I, I, yeah. Stipe, like this guy is the next superstar in waiting. So like, yeah, for our, for our uninitiated, give the mm. give the spiel on. Um, Francis There's a guy from Cameroon In Africa Who moved to France A couple of years ago Who chose to live On the streets Was homeless Yeah was a Homeless broke. guy Yeah mo- Homeless and broke Moved from Africa To France To try and Like create a new life Just walked past A boxing gym And went in And in the space Of like two years Is here <laughs> In the fucking UFC Like Jesus. No experience at all Just this And put a Put a knockout like, On fucking one a of, former K1 world champion. Yeah, like, exactly. One of the baddest men yeah, on fucking like a, planet Earth. A proper K1 striker who weighs 116 kilos. Yeah. In Alistair just, Overeem. Yeah, and who just slept him and <laughs> made him sti- you know what's crazy, stiff as a board crazy in the first about round. about that fight for me? In the tail of the tape, fucking um, Overeem was actually heavier. He came in at like 260 or something. And really? Fucking, and uh, and um, Francis was 250. But... To me, Francis looked a way bigger dude, man. Yeah. You just have to look at some of the um, some of the stills that came out following that fight, and there's like one of you know mid uppercut and fucking it's just, just you know every muscle tense. Brad Pitt, yeah. fucking um, 
Brad Pitt's snatch styles, you know, where he gets knocked out by the big pikey boxer and he's like horizontal in the air. And it's like basically like that. And then one of like Francis just walking away and he's just got these fucking feet on him, man, that are just mm. like these giant fucking feet carrying this enormous frame. And it's just like, I think I sent Brycey a message like fucking not so long after it. And I was like, could you imagine just like walking around knowing you had this, the like w- knowing how big you were and the skill set that you had to go mm. go with that, you would just in in no situation would you feel intimidated. Like, no, I mean no, maybe no. if you were you know hanging around with a bunch of gangbangers with yeah. automatic yeah, weapons yeah, or something, exactly. but yes. unless it somebody so had rela- a weapon, yeah. they would not be able to fuck with. I that, think it'd right? be so relaxing. <laughs> yeah. Not not that I walk around thinking I'm going to get in yeah, fights yeah, or anything yeah. like that. Checking you know what if it's shit. like. Any one of these people who'd want to try something, yeah, yeah. Just gonna, like, like look, they'll, relax. they'll get woken like, up in the good. ear, yeah, like, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> or <laughs> not, <laughs> yeah, 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 or I'll just go to the body, and, and, it's and over. that that'd be almost the the scary thing about your ability to have is yeah. that you, you sort of almost be like, oh shit, oh, like I don't want to kick this guy too hard no, because man. you know like, like if, i mean if, you know the the like brisbane thing of one punch can kill like yeah, exactly. some 21 year old throwing hands yeah. in, in the yeah. fortitude valley can kill yeah. somebody yeah francis and garner can kill somebody with a 60 percent jab yeah <laughs> right you know yeah. What I mean? bang like, lead left like just thro- um, throwing a hundred percent like at some bloke in the valley on a on a friday well, night well that's like <laughs> joe Ro- that's like joe rogan's <laughs> joke like some dude's heckling him when dan henderson's in the crowd and he's like Hey, man, if you don't shut up, Dan Henderson's down the front here. I'll get him to hold you down while I fuck your girlfriend. <laughs> like, fucking everyone like roars with laughter and Dan Henderson just stands up and he's like, why would I hold him down when I can just stare him down? <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, yeah. You can just look at him and be like, oh, no, I fucked up. Like, yeah. this, this guy could bash me. Like, yeah. You saw Dan Henderson in a pub. Like, oh, you're not about to get in a fight with him. Not bloke. ever, not ever. Dan Henderson. Yeah, even would... if you didn't know him. No. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Ooh, yeah, like, yeah. This that, dude looks serious. Yeah, look at that guy's ears. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. He's old and chis- yeah, chiseled yeah, up. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh-oh. Yeah. Dan Henderson would be a, a cool cat to hang around, man. Oh, big time, it, man. Yeah, he'd be a cool guy. He surfs as well? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Who's... um. I was gonna say, uh, I was gonna say, it's sort of a sporting moment, but another highlight of 2017 for me was the Kelly Slater Wave Pool, man. Seeing, Ooh, seeing that, that shit come this get year? done, yeah, yeah, that, yeah was, that was this year. That was incredible. All right, that, for me, that's like, oh fuck, there's there's something on the way in the future. You know what I mean? Something that's open to the consumer. That yeah. like, granted, it would never be as good as having it fucking completely to yourself, like having to line up for it. Dreamworld spec, but. Fuck, that'd be awesome if you could just paddle onto a perfect wave. Like, yeah, yeah. I feel like we're really starting to see. Um, Childhood dreams come true and shit. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah. where's these hoverboards you know, at? Yeah, like? but you, you know all that sort of stuff that w- like, exactly like that of beyond two thousand, where you know it was always like the these futuristic things that you were promised that that weren't really ever materializing. But I feel like like now we're sort of we're starting to see some of that shit, yeah. like Kelly yeah. Slater's wave pool and stuff, where they're really fine tuning shit to a level where you're just like, oh, like that that actually is the real deal. Yeah, Bitcoin man, buy up. Isn't that like, crazy? No, no, no. I'm trying, I'm trying <laughs> to get my head around oh, Bitcoin I know for like nothing. a couple of oh, months yeah. now. Yeah. I'll go on record here and say, look, I haven't. <laughs> I've heard of it. I've heard of Bitcoin mm. and, the, and the concept, but I've looked into it. I had some. Oh, I just haven't. I, had I just some, haven't looked yeah. into it. I haven't dug deeper into that. I'm it's, like, it's nah, one of those nah, things. Nah. It's like I don't know. You know, it's it's one of those things that I think you need to. It's a whole new language that you need yeah. to try and learn, yeah. even to understand the concept of it. Because I, yeah. I I work in like sort of tech projects, and I had a um uh, a few work drinks on Friday night talking to one of the um. I don't think he think he's a technical guy, but obviously, you know, he's he's got the knowledge and shit and he's invested sixteen sixteen and a half K in, in Bitcoin. Oh well not in cryptocurrencies. So there's apparently more than Bitcoin now. There's right. like Ripple and all this different yeah. shit. And it's basically the blockchain and all this sort of stuff like and I and I can grasp like these tiny bits of it, but then I, he just loses me and I'm like, fuck but how does that actually translate into like you getting that out of the bank in Aussie, Aussie dollars? dollars yeah. Like I, I don't understand. Yeah. But to, it's 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 one of those things that it seems like fuck. I think everybody's like, all these people who know that language and who know what they're talking about are going to be ahead of the curve from everybody else. I guess it's like shares. You know, you never yeah. know when shit's going to go belly up. Is it is it ahead? Yeah, is it ahead of the curve or the people that aren't cashing out now aren't going to make any dough? I, I mean? I, if it crumbles in I'll two and a, two and a half years. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'll call it for the ladder. And because two, we two don't have any Bitcoin, we, yeah. we kind of want to call it yeah, for the yeah, ladder yeah, yeah. because you don't want some that, shit that you're not hip to getting yeah. everybody else I rich quick. They got 18 mil. <laughs> yeah. 18 mil, man. I, I, yeah. I reckon you're Hadn't not, heard of it. You're not talking Hadn't heard of it. <laughs> I reckon you're not talking about a bust, like a bust scenario where it just, your Bitcoin doesn't exist next year or anything like that. I just think that as economies of scale work with anything that like when everything is just burning hot and you know everybody's getting into it that's when you need to be getting out of it because mm. that's when there's a, a correction coming you know so and more uh, and more bitcoins and cryptocurrencies yeah and now, now exactly. we got litecoin we're on, yeah. we're well, on this coin here yeah. it's like, well that's apparently like if you wanted to get in now you don't buy bitcoin you buy one of the others that are up right. and coming or whatever Ooh. yeah, Ooh. yeah. So, yeah. Right. so it's like shares right yeah. Like, yeah. yeah exactly yeah. here comes West Farmers baby we're going up <laughs> yeah. get in like uh, Bunk like, gang. Yeah, yeah there's some whole lot of gang shit <laughs> Uh, nah, Sam. Uh, no, nah, it's been a, it's been a fucking solid twenty seventeen, man. It's crazy how quick the shit always goes. You know what I mean? It mm. feels like yesterday you were just doing your New Year's resolutions for twenty seventeen, and then boom, done. Do you have any twenty eighteen as we come in? Twenty uh, eighteen, yeah, like a couple of different things, but um, I don't know, just more more of the same, really. Like career goals, health and fitness goals, that sort of shit. That's like it. good day to day shit. Good, yeah. good to have shit yeah. to work towards. I'm a big New Year's resolution person. Probably haven't thought it like all the way through as to for 2018 yet. But yeah, I don't know if it's cool a New Year's resolution. I think it's good to just kind of remind yourself of your goals every now and then. Like I think the whole New Year's resolution thing's a bit stupid. Actually, it's like the gym, the fucking gym population explodes in January, and then by February everybody's over, yeah. it, over yeah. it, sort of thing. So, yeah. But, yeah. yeah, I think I think it's 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 good to have goals and it's good to check in with those every now and then. Even if you just write shit down, write a couple of action steps that okay, I'm going to start implementing this into my day or or that, and and that will hopefully you know get me closer to something. But you know, goals aren't always everything. You got to be happy with the moment and shit like that as well. Mm, for sure, for sure. Couple of guests we've had on in 2017. Shout out. Let's give some shout outs. Yeah, uh, shout w- out. One person that we didn't shout out who I think we should is April Adams, who came on the on the podcast with with Ben Wynn and has managed to win an Australian boxing title this year because she was challenging for that title previous to our podcast with her and she's since gone on to win that and defend that title and that is a, a sensational achievement. So shout out April. Absolutely, yeah. April's on our list. So 2017 we had. Um we had Uncle Keithy for fucking pew, pew. giving us all the uh, all the inside on, on guns. guns. Yeah. We had we had to cut him off at about yeah. three hours because <laughs> <laughs> he was just getting warmed up at that point. But I think it was it was becoming pretty politically yeah. incorrect. So. And it, uh, it, it ended in an absolute motto as well. But that's a, that's a story for, for us to tell on his return out. Uh, I mean, like the the TKO regulars. We got Justin Benny. Jakey from Stonehand Cold Press. Always a pleasure to have those boys on. Pat- Fueled the podcast. Yeah, Paddy Buck had a hit out after his uh, Great Wall of China marathon. That was, Still that going. was a he's good one, man. Got some triathlons and shit. 2018 yeah. too, big year for him. Dallin Murphy, he's, he's always there, fucking up, up there for mine. Like that was, that was a great one. Enjoyed that. He's kicking goals, un- undoubtedly. Ben 10 in April, obviously. Great, great get for us. Number eight, eight ranked UFC fighter, our first UFC fighter. So that's, that's a good. TKO gold tick for the fucking 2017 Absolutely. calendar year. Absolutely. They were really cool people too. Really enjoyed that. And on the uh, uh, keeping with the fight theme, Sean Johnson and uh, and Josie James, both both a couple of savages in their own Legends, right. Man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, they've never met two of them, mate. Yeah, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, both absolutely. of those boys are uh, fucking legends in their yeah, own right. Yeah, yeah, some individuals right there. And uh, probably up there with your favourites, I'd imagine, Briss old Chris Lynn. Cr- Australian Huge. cricketing extraordinaire Massive D- Down to earth bloke Down to uh, earth legend. Everything you'd hope When you meet someone Yeah of, on, That you know who's, uh, Who is someone You know what I mean yeah. A lot of people say ne- Never meet your heroes I'll, I'll just let you down If anyone ever met Linny And he was their hero He's not going to let you down Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? he, legend. he did just come across As a really genuine bloke Didn't he It was, it was awesome Yeah, yeah really and two bloke. really hard Hard working genuine blokes In uh, in Brad Trainer And Tommy West as well Tommy West was the last guest we had That's right Yeah, yeah. That's Bigger yeah. things coming it's, yeah. it's a crazy list When you look at it In reflection like that That you know You really have gotten The opportunity to meet Some fantastically in- Interesting people and, and yeah It's been it's been real good Real good No and we appreciate Everybody for, for Sticking with us and, and having a list and then uh, hopefully bring you more in 2018. Yeah. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, peeps. Bye for now.